Hi everyone, welcome to Film Dirt. I thought we would talk about this fantastic film from 1971. It's Duel, directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Dennis Weaver as the driver. I've always thought of this as a fantastically atmospheric film. You really get almost enveloped, I think is the right word to describe it. And you're just along on this ride. Nothing much really seems to happen. It's just a very exaggerated case of road rage. And we're completely invested. And of course with this film, Steven Spielberg really established himself as a a suspenseful filmmaker. He knew just how to prolong a moment so that you're not boring the audience and you're increasing the tension. And this is one of the perfect examples of of a, a pretty small story, but told really well in a full-length feature, which of course never started that way. It was a TV special, and I heard that they went back to refilm some scenes just to make it a full-length cinema release. And it is quite a short runtime. It's only about an hour and a half. So it's very brisk and it does move along pretty swiftly story-wise. So I mentioned earlier about how atmospheric it is. We've got the first introduction to the film, which is just um, a, a bumper eye view, I guess it is, where we're just going along the highway and we're just listening to the radio. And I don't know how long that scene went on for. Might have been a good few minutes, <laughs> but it was fine because it really just tells the story on its own. What type of day it is, it's just another day of the week. And Dennis Weaver is the everyman on his way to work. Although I think it's a, an odd route to <laughs> go to work. That road seems to be never ending. It's probably a bit more strange for people like me from the UK. We're used to more built up areas or, or more green areas to drive through. And just going through mountains, it does look a little bit sketchy, especially because it seems like it's only one road. You can't branch out anywhere else and lose the truck driver. You know, you've got one road like a roller coaster. <laughs> There's no escape. So you're either going up a mountain or, or down the other end, and that's pretty much it. It just increases the tension because... You know, it's often compared to Jaws on the road. When you've got Jaws coming up behind you and there is no escape, it seems once you're on that road, you're you're his. And this devil truck as well is not a pretty sight. It does look like it's from hell, doesn't it? All rusted up and rattly and it doesn't look from like it's from this earth. But having said that, that's what I thought back then when I used to see that with uh, my parents back in the day it did look really scary just just because of all of the 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 rust on it and it didn't look like it was an any ordinary truck but having seen it now occasionally you would see similar looking trucks on the roads here uh, coming across the border with polish or german number plates and they don't look too dissimilar i know i know they've got a lot of mileage (laughs) to go and of course, they do look a little bit dirty, but you know, you often wonder: is there a company that takes pride in how their vehicles look? Probably not so much nowadays. But when I see a rusted-out truck like this, I always think of Jewel. It meant a lot to me when I was a child. It was just my gateway into movies as a whole. I would say. I think it's just the the fact that you're scared and you're tense. Because it is just the everyman. We only see his family uh, fleetingly, maybe in one scene. And Dennis Weaver plays it perfectly. He shows the right amount of fear. You know, when you think you've caught the guy and it doesn't turn out to be him, you can see the despair in his face. And, you know, he doesn't want to embarrass himself further and just wants to stay alive. And from what I saw, I don't think it was ever really meant to be any explanation for what actually happened and why. It's just a guy, maybe full of road rage at at being beeped at and and overtaken by a much smaller, weaker car. And I did read as well, I think it was 
developed by uh, the writer having a similar experience subject to a tailgater back in the 60s. And the story has been put to film by Steven Spielberg in such a, a fantastic way that all ages would be completely invested. Now, just to touch on the ending, I did read another bit of trivia that outlined the direction he wanted to go in regards to where the truck would end up and whether it would be a, a huge ball of fire when it ran off the edge and, and plummeted to the rocks below. I like the choice Spielberg made by just having it sit there, slowly dying like an animal. I love that analogy, because it really did seem like a, another version of Jaws. And again, what a great film. I absolutely love this, and always have done. So as for a score, I'm not going to hesitate in giving it the five stars. I still think this has got to be considered among Spielberg's best. Although he may not agree because it really is one of his very early, um, almost experimental films that he had to cobble together, as well as the reshoots to, you know, fatten out the runtime a little bit. But even so, the end product really is something special. And for me, it's just another time capsule film, which I've always loved. I did see this in high def on a fairly large screen, and it's got that really nice light dusting of grain throughout and that soft sunny haze almost hanging over the frame fantastic and i think this is the look that many modern films probably try and replicate i saw a film recently that i also covered on this channel um, american made with tom cruise i think they played with the filter there to try and give it that 70s look but i don't think they really succeeded and should have just left it as it was as it appeared in the original trailer I think there's a uniqueness to the the cameras and the lenses of the actual 70s that were being used at the time. And that's why it's always such a pleasure to occasionally come back and revisit older films because they've just got that unique feel that cannot be replicated nowadays. So with that, thank you for joining me for this little reminisce and look back at such a classic film. I really appreciate you joining me and I'd love for you to join me again. You can do that by liking and subscribing and all of that, they always tell you. Speak to you again on my next review. All the best and take care.